Hey guys, it's Jerry's Live. Welcome. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Jean. Today we've got episode JL136. The episode is Charcoal Pencil Demo Immediate Sketching. Uh, just trying to get you in the mindset of you may only have 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes to be able to just grab a couple supplies out of your studio or a drawer, get them out, actually try to get just a little bit of work done. It doesn't have to be finished work. It's work for the sheer just practice of it, the joy of it, just making sure you've got time to at least be productive, even if you maybe you're kind of of that mindset where you're just not sure if you want to or not. So today, charcoal pencils. Um, I like charcoal pencils because I'm not a fan of mess. And if I only have a short amount of time, to work, I do not want to get out sticks and get super dirty. That's just me. There's other people that probably delight in it that are that are the pig puns of the art world. I'm I'm just not. So, um, so we're going to be using the Marie's charcoal pencils. I've got the extra soft, the soft, and what's called medium or neutral, which is kind of the hardest of them. Um, they've got a great paper wrapping that looks it looks like a wood barrel, but it's really super fine, uh, very tightly wrapped paper. So it gives it protection, it's easy to sharpen, um, but it just has kind of a nice feel to it and a little bit of flex, so it's just kind of comfortable in the hand. Uh, Strathmore 500 series charcoal paper pad. The paper I normally use for just immediate sketching is, is our favorite colossal sketch pads uh, that Jerry's has. The tooth for it is great with this type of charcoal work however right now they've been so popular we have been sold out so we're waiting on a shipment and it's something we love so instead this was something that i had that i use from time to time 500 series is the cotton uh because you never know if you're going to do something that you really like and it might as well be archival and ready to go so that's what we're going to use today is the strathmore um 500 series charcoal paper it's got some nice tooth to it uh we've got Coom pencil sharpener, uh, two erasers, the Marie's um, 4B eraser that I'm a huge fan of. It can erase even oil pe uh, pencil, so um, love those. And then we've got a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser if we need to pull up any dusty, you know, areas for pickup. Um, and then my favorite fixative for charcoal is uh, the Sennelier de la Croix. It's for pencil charcoal and like oil-based crayons. So it just is is a very nice, very light fixative that holds really well. So that's what we had here in the studio. So I just put that on there for you to think about and consider once you do those charcoal drawings, go ahead and do the fixative on them. Uh, it'll save it, preserve it, keep it smear free. So um, anyway, so let's get started. What time do we start, Katie? So we make sure that we give them a full hour. We're about four minutes in. Okay. Time, so. All right. So that'll let me kind of know what we're doing time-wise. Um, I'll count you down. All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this set up so we can go ahead and we'll, we'll go past the one that I started on. So I just grabbed two subject matters. Well, a couple subject matters, and then the girls picked what they liked best. So you're at their mercy. Um, and again, if you're if you're wanting to know any of these products, if you pick up a little later with us, JL136 is the keyword. You can go to the jerrysartorama.com website, type in JL136, it'll show you any of these products that we're using on that. So, so we've got an elephant in black and white because I thought that might be a nice um, kind of easy to see. We're, we're worrying about form, not how to portray the the colors of it in form. Um, and then we've got half of an onion slice, just because that's got some really nice lines. We can kind of practice line work, um, whether we want to make it heavier or lighter, just that kind of stuff with the media sketching. Because that's something that's I think this is the thing that most artists have problems with, um, is line stroke quality. So it's a good thing to practice when you've got a little bit of time. All right. So, Katie, if we can get the overhead so that they can see it, and we put one up here so I've got it kind of up out of the way. Perfect. All right. So, you know what? We've 
got room, so I'm going to move that over. I think that would be easier. That, that seems like the glare is a little less on the lights for that. All right. Um, and Katie, while we start, do you want to tell them about the annual self-portrait contest while I start just kind of laying out the sketches, or you want me to? Go for it. I'll let you know. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'll go, go for it. <laughs> well, well, I'm trying to trying to draw. So 8th Annual Portrait Contest, it goes from now until April 12th, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, $5,000 worth of prizes. The winners are announced June 12th. 30 popular vote finalists, meaning it doesn't have to be the best one in there as long as you got some followers that are, that are willing to come on there and vote. You can be one of the finalists and win some prizes. Um, there's 30 jury shows, chosen finalists, and then out of those, there is a professional uh, panel of artists that will go from there and be able to um, pick the winners. So it's top 60 from that. will be entered into the final round of voting. Yes. To pick the winners from. So, yeah. so that's uh, and that's how it's done. So you need to get that in by April 12th. If they go to the um, website and just put self-portrait into the search bar. Yes. Take them right to the page where they can enter. Okay. Um, they can then share. Now, I have had a couple of people that are already asking about voting. Voting does not start until entry closes. So it may look like you can vote, but there's no voting happening yet. Yeah, you got to gotta get stuff in first. Got to <laughs> let everybody get their chance. Yeah, everybody's got to get in, and then we'll open the voting. So, all I right. have a quick question on YouTube. Are the prizes available to Canada or is it United States only? Huh. I do Good question. This one, because the um, prizes are e-gift cards, it's open worldwide, but let me double check that. Good question. Yeah. I do believe this one we can. Okay. Um, all right. So that's cool. All right. Very good. So anyway, get your get your um, your artwork in for that. And remember, self portrait means it's it's a person portrait. It's you. It's it's not. Um, and it's got to be actual artwork. It's it can't be mm -hmm. selfies with a camera or with a phone, all that stuff. It's one thing if you take it, take the picture, and then turn it into a painting. So. Um, and every year it seems like we get a whole bunch of people that don't kind of, we're, we're an art supply company, so you want it to be art supplies that you're using for it. So I think that's, did we hit on all the, the marks mm -hmm. for that? Okay. Yeah. All right, so all I've been doing so far is blocking this in. Um, I'm not making any super heavy lines. It's in this a little bit hard to see right now, I think. Uh, just because I'm kind of ghosting in a very quick underdrawing. So now I'm going to come back in and make some more. I, there's some things that I can already see that, that I want to change a little bit. So I'll um, come back in and make kind of some adjustments. Like I, I can see in my drawing that this is not wide enough here. I've kind of been talking and going off other points um, and not paying attention. So I'm going to come back and bring my eye out make sure I've got them up high enough typically I wouldn't do this but since charcoal is a little bit easier to see I'm gonna just take a few things out just so I don't have so much line work all right so I like that I like where this is for the tusks uh, so I I'm going to go ahead and put his eyes in here so just so I can kind of see where I'm at, the eyes are really in this, other than the shadows in here, the darkest um, thing in the entire kind of drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get those sketched in and go ahead and make them dark so I can kind of see where's my darkest darks so I know where I'm gonna be working from. And with that, I'm not gonna make them super black. This isn't my, this is my hardest pencil, this is not soft one but I just want to be able to kind of see where I'm going from here okay all right and if there's any questions just grab gra holler 
No Shut question, up. but Richard is glad your arm is better. Yes. Well, it's I don't have to wear the brace. It's not necessarily better. Get in there. But thank you. Yes. Still trying to figure it out. All right. So I'm going to take this and make some darker darks kind of in here in the face where I want this area of the tusks to kind of come down from. I'm trying to just kind of see, find the form, okay? See, feel, find the form. Um, the same with, I want to look at this, but this is, I've got a really bad reflection and you guys don't. So I've got my one up here. I'm going to try to find the form of the tusks. Now the foreshortening for it, you want to shoot them out to the side because you know that's kind of where they go, but we're not, we're seeing them from the front. So right there is the point of that. This is the very tip right here. So we're going to have this kind of come down. We're going to see underneath. We're seeing the very kind of fattest part of it due to the foreshortening. So I'm going to pull that out here. Amy, Maria is wondering, when you're normally drawing, do you usually draw flat or on an easel or tilted board? <sighs> Your that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, I probably, what I do most when it's my own uh, work, Marie, it's Maria, right, to ask, mm -hmm. is uh, she asked what my preference was for, for drawing, whether I'm working at an easel, work, whether I'm working at a drawing board. Probably through school I used drawing boards, but now because just my my work table set up, I like to put it on a board, mount it on a wood board, and then I tilt it kind of however I want it. So I actually sit, if it, I do have the stand, so I can tilt it with the stand, but depending on how my arm feels in the chair, I may have different chair heights, right? Um, so I, if I sit lower, I want to be able to tilt it up and down so I don't have it on the stand. Um, but I do most of my drawing at a work table, um, unless it's a painting and then obviously that's, that's going to be on an easel, but I just, I don't, I don't like my hand out like this. I don't feel like, because I, I will tend to take my pencil and hold it and measure and I put my finger down to brace to not smear it's really hard to do when you're on a, a surface where you're upright. And I don't feel like I've got gravity to kind of help with the line quality. If that makes, I mean, that sounds like a weird thing, but it's just, it is. Jeff on YouTube would like to know if there's any way, and I quote, to make charcoal not feel like nails on a chalkboard. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, these actually, <laughs> another reason why I like these, because that sound is, creeps me out so um these are not as bad as, as sticks and and other things the softer and more compressed the stick is usually the less and i and i really swear that's why people are into the oil compressed charcoal sticks because they don't do yeah. that it's, it's for all those misophonia inflicted artists out there i guess now would the paper have anything to do with that uh, it probably depends on the paper. This stuff has a little bit of drag because it's really textured. Um, I can hear it. I can. I don't know if it's picking up for them. Another benefit to these pencils is your hands are still clean. Yeah. S sort of so part. far. Yeah. They're, they're clean for Amy. For, for Amy, yes. They, if they are. If it you'd already be... Oh, yes. Like uh, yeah. No, they're... they're, they're they're the simplest of pencils, and, and I didn't think with the paper binding it would be, I don't know, I'm kind of a traditionalist with supplies, and uh, after the first drawing I did with these, I bought, I don't even know how many boxes, dozens of boxes, and um, my son is a senior in college getting a studio art degree, and when he was doing... Um, figure drawing they did worked in charcoal all the time I got him tons of boxes too because it's just it's just one of those things where they're just that del a delightful to use B the variations of uh, from the hard to soft um, get really like this isn't as black the other one we'll, we'll show you in a little bit it's nice and black it's it's they're just very user-friendly 
Okay. And you can see I'm putting different pressure in some places to get a little bit harder line. I'm, I apologize that this was photo, unfortunately, was cropped right up here. So we're kind of where there's points, like on some of these, I will tend to make like this harder just to emphasize the difference in where kind of that bonier protrusion is because you don't want some of these, these areas where it's transition where we're not seeing, we're seeing kind of the foreshortening of this skull. They have these very, um, I, I guess primitive, almost dinosaur-like skulls. Um, so we're seeing the kind of, this would be where all the soft tissue attaches to the skull. So you don't want your line to be hard there because that's not really a hard line. Um, it's not uh, where something is falling away. Back here, that actually recesses back behind that eye socket kind of protrusion. So I'm going to make that more of a hard-edged line. Can I keep looking at the... Instead of looking at my easel thing here. I'm so used to having my reference thing immediately next to it. Okay, so... Trunks are tricky with that foreshortening. You want to tend to just make it one thickness because that's kind of how you think you see it. It's actually because this is coming at you in this area, you want that to be a, that little bit thicker. And then this curls up and it looks like it's going back up under here, but you can't see it in the shadows. So I'm actually going to give more information than that drawing is just so that it gives you a little bit more of that natural curve where that would be going on him. I've drawn enough elephants where I feel fairly confident that that's going back in there to that mouth. Okay. Amy. Yes. Linda on Facebook was wondering if you, if there was a way to use clear gesso over it without smudging. Okay, so I have done that with charcoal and with, um, that's a, it's a good question. The question is, uh, and I'm just saying it because I don't know if people are picking up uh, Amanda's voice. How do you, would you fix this to put clear gesso on it without it smudging? A lot of workable fixatives. You should be able to do multiple light coats. You don't want to do them heavy and you don't want to do a ton of them because you don't want there to be that unstable layer, right? Between whatever this is, whether it's on paper, whether it's on um, canvas, acrylic prime canvas or something like that. So you want just to fix it enough. And then when you go over it with your acrylic and the brush, you could do one of two things. Thin it down a little and use a roller no, because, because the roller goes over it, it doesn't mm -hmm. smear it like a brush is, right? So it's not dragging. It goes on and it just goes right across. It, but it would need to be like, a, like you know, when you paint trim in your house, there's a little soft roller that's kind of on a, a little hand thing. You want it to be soft, but because acrylic gesso is clear and it's got a lot more resin, if you make it like too thick of layery, it might, it might dry cloudy. So you won't get that kind of perfectly transparent... Uh, nature of the gesso through it. So you just have to be real. You want to practice it first mm -hmm. on uh, another substrate of, that you're using, right? Not on, do some scribbling and do it on your, uh, you know, do it with the materials that you're going to use for it. Do some scribbles and, and give it a go with the fixative and then with the gesso first. So, uh, but it, but it should work. I've actually done it by, rather than the roller I thought of after the fact, I've actually done it by hand with super soft um like goat uh goat hair brushes brush. it just it, it would start dragging it just a little but i did not put very much fixative on it because i was so afraid that um that it wouldn't bond so just and that was on a wood panel so again another hard surface that's the the that doesn't have the tooth that this has uh, but it's it's definitely very possible it's just one of those things that you do want to practice to get right okay so we're just kind of 
getting some of the curves of the ear here. We can't see over the edge here where this ear is. There's not a delineated shadow, so I'm just gonna kind of leave that very faint line that suggests where that goes, okay? We don't have to have it heavy there. This is his leg, so we're gonna come back down here. Uh, we lose a lot of this in shadow in here shadow so let's get some of these other forms and then we'll start working on shading now with this it comes up and across right so let's get some of these larger forms first where this is coming up and across hey amy yes. karen on youtube would like to know if this photo is available anywhere for them to use could we post it in it's, the live group it's on pixabay i will post them uh probably tomorrow, since we started late, probably uh, tomorrow, I'll post them in the group by noon tomorrow, um, the ones that, we've, that we're using here, so that you guys will be able to access those. Will that work? So, and if, if you're not sure, you're like, what post what, where, we have a Jerry's Live Facebook group, go to groups on Facebook, type in uh, Jerry's Live, that will take you to it. You do have to answer the question or you will not be admitted into the group. Once you're in that group, um, you can post artwork, you can make all sorts of cool friends. Um, we've got a great community full of um, all sorts of really amazing artists, not only artists, but just people that are students, people that are just you know getting started. We've got professionals that illustrate books. It's a great group to be in, but we post lots of references and sometimes homework in there so go ahead and get on there if you want to be able to get these references and pixabay if you're not familiar with pixabay pixabay is a free use website uh, for just anybody um, where you can they're copyright free images uh, the best thing to do because it can be all sorts of vectors and everything else always set it to photos for your searches and then you'll get uh, photos of kind of whatever you whatever you want okay I'm just g going by contour here uh, starting to kind of work where some of the shadows are okay now with this I'm just gonna make very the lines don't have to be perfect, but I, I want to try to get kind of close. Remember, we're not worrying about the image being perfect. We're worrying about, does this translate well? Is this starting to look believable? As I'm bringing this down here, these lines get straighter. They're not curving as much because that transition's starting to happen where his trunk's starting to then start falling away from you. So you need to make sure that you're making those adjustments so that this reads correct. You can see I'm just, I'm just kind of ghosting and dragging that along there. Now, let's see, we'd probably better do his other ear over here. It's in shadow. And then we got this little bump over here. You can see as my pencil starts getting less sharp, it's not keeping kind of as fine and pretty of a line. The ears have a lot of wrinkles in there. It's harder for you guys to see probably in that shadow. Okay, so what do we do from here? We start putting in layers of shadow. I kind of put some in there. I'm going to switch. Uh, oh. Actually, I'm going to switch to the, the kind of mid-soft range, and I'm going to put a little bit of some of these darker lines in. Again, I'm just putting my fingernail down because the fingernail is pretty small. It's not going to move a lot of surface area. And I'm going to get some of these areas that I want that are going to be in shadow, kind of firming up my lines so I know for sure this is where I want my lines to go. I'm gonna my shadowing I'm actually putting small lines 
and I'm following the contour, okay, of, of the elephant. I'm not, contour means where the body turns and kind of bends. I'm using the lines to follow that, okay? So same over here. This has got a pretty black area right there, and then it's pretty much the same value. So there's one there. Okay, this eye you almost can't even see, so kind of shaded back behind here, and you lose the pupil. So I'm actually going to use that, kind of make some of those twists and turns that are in there, and go ahead and lose that value where you can't see as much. it's pretty dark right there okay that's kind of all in that see how that starts making it much more three-dimensional all right over here we've got a little bit Taller questions as you guys have them. I have a question. People, yes. You have three different colors of the boxes of those pencils on the table. Mm -hmm. What are the differences? There is, uh, and that's and that's how kind of seeing what the um, the list is of the supplies. There's a medium neutral, which is the hardest, right? Then there's a soft. Then there's an extra soft. So. It's actually a good time to remind people that if they put the keyword JL136 um, in the search bar on the site, it'll take them straight to that. And they can see all the stuff that you're using. Okay, medium neutral. There's. Make sure that's the soft, yeah. When you push on that, it, it distributes the. Oops, let's do extra soft, sorry. See how much easier that is for me to, I'm barely pressing and see how much darker that is. Okay, so that's, that's the oh, difference. Wow. Look how black I can make that if I push, right? And that neutral is going to be much harder. See the big difference? I mean, you can push slightly harder with the soft. You just, it's just it, a nice um, kind of darker. And, and I don't think it, this shows as kind of brightly since it's not a super white paper. That cream kind of makes it, and just the, the television and everybody's monitors and stuff makes it a little harder to um, kind of see for sure, right? But you can see it pretty good. Okay. All right, so yeah, bottom one. yes. So next, I'm going to come in here because I think the next most important place is kind of these tusks, right? I'm going to make those. While you're doing that, Amy yes. Patty Fuller from Facebook wants to know if you make a mark or put down a line, how easily lifted with the kneaded eraser is it? Ah, uh, <laughs> kneaded erasers lift dust. Kneaded erasers don't lift. Um, lines per se. Um, all right, so we're gonna, huh? I know, these gross me out. So this is a lot easier to see how that pulled up some, it lightened it some by just pushing and pulling up a little. See how that's lighter? But It doesn't really erase, right? And it just transferred more of that over there. Okay, where this, the Marie's, you can actually, it's gonna depend on paper. This paper has a lot of texture, so you're not gonna get it all erased on it. 
Um, it depends on what type of charcoal you have. If there's any oil in it, that's not coming off, you know, with a texture like this. It might lighten up, but it's not coming off. So it's, it's more, when you get a new paper pad, take the first piece and do some experimenting. We tell you all the time, swatch your paints so you know what to expect, right? How many people swatch their new pencils? Besides Frida and Amanda, how many people really swatch their new pencils? When you get a, a tin of graphite pencils, you just know, okay, they're in the order from hardest to darkest, so, you know, hardest to softest, so that's gonna be lightest to darkest not always on every paper. So if there's a set of drawing tools you use a lot and you're going to use them on a new pad, you know, you get new charcoal paper, it's going to perform very different from a different brand of paper that wasn't charcoal paper, you know, that you used it on, or even from brand to brand in charcoal paper, it's going to perform very differently. So it's always a good idea to, to do that, to erase. When, like, we've had some different uh, sketchbook papers that we've looked at making sketchbooks for Jerry's, right? It's my job when we look at those to take it, and there's about 12 to 15 different materials that I try on each paper and do a racer test with charcoal and with graphite to see how well does this paper erase. And then everything gets rated. So if there's 12 different items, it all gets rated in comparison to each other. How hard is this to erase? How nice of a line does this paper make? Is it too soft for these type of things? It might be perfect for charcoal. It might be way too soft for graphite. You know, it, it, graphite might dent it. So those are things that, you know, if I'm doing that for paper to give a definition and a, you know, descriptor of for you to buy it, you should be doing that with paper that you're actually going to use as tools, right? So it seems like a weird thing, but trust me, it makes a big difference in how um, kind of ready you are to actually work with it once you've got it there and ready to go. Also, which pencil are you using right now? Um, I believe it's the soft. Okay. No, it's the soft, because I'm wanting to get a little bit darker line just for the, if I was doing this uh, on an artwork that I was going to keep for me, I would use the neutral just to get lines in first but we don't have that luxury of this that time right now. What's going on, Katie? Fixing the camera. Oh. Okay. She's creeping over here. It's like, what's she doing? Okay. So see by a little bit of shading on the tusk here, we can give the illusion of that that point is here for sure. I hope that this is showing up darker on their monitors than it is on mine. Because to me it's the not. Those are showing up really well they actually. Really are. Okay, good. Okay, so in these areas where we've got these blackest blacks, I mean you could use even, you don't have to use You can use bigger, more expressive, darker lines. One of the pieces we were going to look at doing was a gorilla. And when I do work like that where there's hair, all of my lines in drawing are super dark and super expressive, like this type of shadow that I'm going to do right here. Just to try to get this in so you can kind of see the... the um, ear will pop out a little bit and then I'm going to go back in. We here in YouTube land have a question about the hardness of the graph of the charcoal lead compared to a standard graphite lead. If you push too hard with a normal pencil, you're going to leave a dent in the paper. Is that if, an issue with these as well? Or if, are they if you push too, too hard with charcoal, it's going to snap um, because it's Push, 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 push. I can hear it crack. I heard it from over here. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can get this super dark. Now I'm not, I'm, I'm, the way that I'm putting pressure on it is very, I know what angle to, to put it at without making it snap. Right. But when I shade, I turn it on its side and I do lines. Okay. So I don't put as much pressure because it's more the mark 
that I'm looking for, not the pressure. Better to put less pressure on it and do more lines, more mark making, I think looks better than a lot of very heavy, you know. Now with this, I would normally not do this this bold because to me it's, it's the, it plays with texture, which the elephant does not have texture. The texture of the elephant is within the wrinkles, right? It's not like it's, it's got hair and putting too much of this, unless the whole thing's gonna just be loose and kind of scratchy scratchy is not so conducive to, but I wanna do this so we can, we well, can make this stuff pop out. Go ahead. Alexandra would like to know if a carbon pencil is considered another form of charcoal or is it a whole different category? Carbon? Mm -hmm. Carbon is just a, a basically, I mean, a, a pigment. It's going to be, it's very similar to graphite in the performance. Um, it's, I mean, just kind of another tool of the same. It's always good to to try the performance of all of them, you know, with the mark making and see kind of, and again, it's gonna be different on Bristol as to this paper, as to thin sketch paper, as to cotton watercolor paper, right? Any of the things. So it's just in trying, people are always very resistant to, but I don't wanna waste paper. I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do that. If you don't know how, if you don't know how it's going to work, you're, you're not going to know how to properly it's not a waste if you're learning from it. No. Do we want to stick with this one and just finish this since are people vested in this? Or do we want to go to the onion? How do people want to do this? Give them about 30 Get, That's fine. I'll just keep working on this. Is it, is it more important for us to, to kind of see how it's laid out or see how things finish up with shading? While we're waiting for answers on that, can you talk about erasers for a moment? Patty Fuller said that she sees that you have the Marie's 4B on the list, which you can find by JL136 on the website. Um, can you buy erasers like you do sketching pencils? And in which case would you use a hard eraser? Hard erasers are gonna depend. Okay, again, anytime you're using materials in conjunction with each other, it depends on the drawing material, it depends on the eraser, it depends on the paper material. Something that's going to make marks on different types of paper is going to be erased differently by different erasers. And then also the paper may or may not be erased by different erasers because of the softness or the hardness or the slickness or the absorbency. So it, it just depends. It's, that's why I, I know it seems silly. They come up with you can, you pull up a racer on our website and there's like what 20 or 30 different things and then there's stick racers blah 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 every eraser does a different job every eraser excels at picking up particular yeah bring that over here so they can see this is how many this erasers is what we keep in the studio. this is how many erasers we have here in the studio there's a dry cleaning pad and a battery operated eraser operated eraser and all of this Because all these serve different functions, right? Because all these excel at erasing specific things. There would be no reason to come up with new this, that, and the other thing erasers if everything that you use could be erased by something that already existed on the market. What would the point of that? Because it's, it's a small ticket item, it wouldn't be a lot of profit in it, right? But because some things don't erase well, as other things, you know, it's it's all in the research of developing new things that are going to pick up different types of medium. Something you would use to try to lighten and pick up a soft pastel is going to be vastly different than something you're going to use on, like, say, uh, a, an ebony pencil, right? That's super, like, 9B dark graphite-wise. What is everybody saying for the... YouTube is voting for the elephant. Okay. Hands down. All right, they Amanda. Straight up tied. <laughs> okay. Well, we it might be leaning towards minutes. onion. 
Okay, so if we've got 20 minutes, let's do this. Uh, let's finish the elephant because then everybody can see what that looks like. And then we will post the homework of the onion. Uh, I mean, we'll, I'll post both of the drawings in uh, both of the, uh, the examples in the Facebook. And I will do the onion with the thing. And I'll see if I can't. I've been trying to. I just got a new iPad, and I would really love to learn how to video work being done. So I will see if I can't within the next week get it set up and do like a little video of. I think you know some people that can help you with that. Well, that's true. That's you a good point. Just go old school and tape it to an easel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Katie's the master of that. <laughs> Roberta on Facebook is wondering. Since there are no catch lights in the elephant's eyes in the source photo, would you use artistic license to add them to give it more visual interest, or would you leave it just like the photo? Um, well, okay, so there's not a highlight source in this, right? Uh, it's, it's a very grayed out photo. Ivory tusks are generally like, it's a bone white. It's ivory white. They're so grayed in this that you are not going to have a highlight source. Putting a highlight source in when there one doesn't exist is Tricky. is kind of like making it go from looking realistic to cartoonish. The viewer's not going to understand that they don't see a highlight source on it. They're just going to know it looks wrong if there's super white reflections in the eyes, right? So, and the paper is a cream that I'm using, a natural cream. So if I put a super white light source, that's going to stick out like a sore thumb to me. You don't always have to have, look at your subject matter and, and see whether you think by the light, by the, you know, angle that it's at, by the values that exist with the other, um, with the other shadows and things in it, evaluate whether you think you really need it or not. You may. You know, but I, I, I wouldn't put one in if this was something that I was really looking to make super finished. I, I just, I wouldn't do it. Karen would like to know how these pencils are sharpened. Can you use just a regular pencil sharpener? This is just the Coom two hole magnesium oh, pencil sharpener. Too. That's super inexpensive. It's like what? Less than $3. Um, has the small and the large so if you had a larger pencil like the larger charcoal pencils or the larger oil pencils it would do it this fits perfect in the smaller one that sharpener is a dollar 88. yeah kaboom the i mean the packs of 12 pencils are what 13 or 14 yeah. bucks for that many pencils 10 19. And to me, I I don't know if you would need all of them. Really, you could go with the with the mid range one, but I I have all of them because I like the feel of the marks on some of them versus others. So, all right, uh, I need to switch it over here. All right, so we've got some shadow in here. So I'm gonna come down face like that. There's this marvelous line right here. I'm going to enhance that somewhat. Now with these, I'm just kind of scribbling in some of the texture lines that are in the elephant's face. I'm not measuring. I'm not checking the line against another line. I just like how kind of rough that line is that starts suggesting the skin there right down here where you can see the jaw under here it looks very strange so i'm gonna take this and use some artistic license to kind of gray this out all the way to the edge of that jaw and then come back in So it's giving that suggestion of the job, but we're not giving so much information that somebody's like, yes, that's right. No, that's wrong. It's called artistic license. I 
again I don't know if I would do this much this hard of a line here but I'm wanting that so we can see kind of how this drops away I could go back in later and smooth this out with a stomp if I wanted um, Maria says that she suspects that you're as much of an art supply addict as all of us are. <laughs> I said, mm-hmm. If she's not joined our group, if you go back in our Facebook posts, when I, uh, when my home studio got kind of finished finally, I think I took pictures of all the supplies in it, didn't I? Or had I not even put all the supplies in it yet? It was very clean to be your studio. That's because I hadn't worked in it yet. You ought to see it now. <laughs> I don't think you had unpacked most of your stuff, yeah. actually. Yeah, no, I, I, I usually start by cleaning off the work table because there's lots of things in there constantly. And because Riker was working in there, my son was working in there over Christmas on some paintings, so lots of, lots of things got moved around. I'm sure most people in the chat can agree that you can never have too many art supplies. Nope. I will say I went through my acrylics and, and gave some away though. I, I decided to streamline to yeah. a couple of, of different brands because I felt like they worked really well together and were, they just have colors a specific, like their quinacridone magenta is like the right pigment that I personally prefer. And, we and I encourage every once in a while so you can get more. <laughs> right. I, I, I did it and I was very proud of myself and I went through all my acrylic brushes and I trashed the ones that really needed to go to the great, the great uh, brush. It hurt your heart a little bit. Brush God in the sky. Uh, I, it did, but then when I went back in there and I could find things easier and get to brushes that were uh, in really good shape, I felt very relieved, so. But as I was doing it, I was like, that's a lot of brushes to, <laughs> to get rid of. Can everybody see how this is kind of, I'm not so much drawing on this line. I don't want this to be super hard because again, this is like a soft tissue transition from these big kind of occipital areas on the elephant back to kind of the big lumpy back skull that it's got. So I'm just using line to kind of find that form and enhance it a little bit. Is that starting to look more three-dimensional to everybody? Rude John suggested a few speckles of gold on the tusks to make them pop. <laughs> I know that's not what we're doing today, just, but I thought it might be Do a little gold dipping. <laughs> well, it'd make it look, you know, She's more like it was on a shelf. I've, I've got some gold gouache. I could do that, mm -hmm. John. Don't, don't tell well, me. That brings a good point. Could you layer? something over top of that? Uh, you would want to put that fixative on and then you would probably need to use something like an acrylic gouache that could be layered over it, not something that's watercolor where it's not, this is paper isn't sized for that, but something dry brushed on very carefully after the sizing's been applied would definitely help. You know, Turner Curl gouache would be perfect for that kind of thing as long as the sizing, since it's, it's good at sticking to everything you know, that would be it. Does a, stick to everybody. It's, it will stick to your fingernails and you will get take yes. forever to get off. <laughs> it will. Which is good because then you know it works for other stuff. It's just not good if you actually get a manicure for once. Cindy is wondering what you would use to smudge for softness. What I would use to smudge? Mm -hmm. Is this Cindy Orange. Lemieux? She mm -hmm. knows she knows I don't smudge. What would you recommend? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could use tortillions. You could use stomps. Uh, we've got some over on the shelf. If you guys, somebody wants to grab some of those, I think they're on that shelf from one of the episodes we did last fall. We can use a little bit and soften some stuff. Okay. You do not want to use your fingers, though, for multiple reasons, including the oils in your skin. Yes. If I take this, and this is a cotton paper, so I guess at least it's archival, but 
your hand, even if you wash it, still has some, some layers of oil and gross and schmutz. And even on the side of your hand, I mean, you got dead skin flakes. Your body is an acidic yeah. gobbledygook of, of stuff. You don't want it in your drawing. And because what's going to happen is you might not see it now. Give it a, a year or two, you will start seeing these little kind of brownish prints, kind of little, almost like a, a really thin uh, red, you know, oxide or something like that. It'll be these little lovely fingerprints that you just put on. Okay. Like if someone ate a sandwich and then touched the paper. Yes. Yes, like that. <laughs> okay. Stomp. Hey, for you, sir? Who, me? No, we're, we're talking about something that was framed and done. Somebody's looking at it. Okay, so see how that, since I used that softness, see how, look how black that got. It was done the exact same way as over there, right? If what? I come up, this is the same, watch. If I come up here, look how much darker that just made that. I can, I can use this as a tool and draw even into some of these lines that I've created. Cause it's got that little point to it, right? Watch, watch how this is going to pop out. I'm using this like I would my pencil, cross hatching with it. So where I'm, where I'm actually drawing on it is smearing the line. See how much darker that side is than this side? Watch. LA is wondering what's the difference between a stomp and a tortillion. Okay, so a stomp is very fuzzy paper, really thin, that's rolled and layered. I'm going to put it right over this so it's easy to see. Okay, super fine. Like they use a lot of rice paper or even newsprint for these, right? Stomp or stump, depending on who's doing it. Tortillion is a thicker paper. You can see like that, that's actually rolled and it's, it's got a texture to it, right? So, oh, here, there we go. Ah! Can you see that, that it's a paper? If I could, if I had fingernails, I could pull this apart and unroll it. Cause it's just, it's just a rolled thin paper where this is super fine and almost fuzzy soft. I mean, see how that can just smear that very gently. If I do that with a tortillion, to me, a tortillion isn't as soft, so it's harder to smudge. Like, see how that's not smudging as smudging, smudging. See how that's not making that as dark? Watch when I take that same, the other tool, I'm going to turn it so it's not the same blackness. Look how much darker I can get that with that being that softer. See that? Okay, now, this is for this. I don't do this. I leave the lines as is because to me, this is, I would then have to do this through the majority of the rest of the work. And, and it takes away from the clarity and the importance of my line work that I worked so hard to put down. I mean, I could do that and then come back across it and put some lines down through it, but you really can't see it. You've really lost, even if I take this soft, you can't, you can't see where those kind of beautiful lines are. Or if I come over here, see how you can still see those lines that I just put in there? Because the, the line work is not prohibiting that from being seen. This starts taking on a life of its own, in my, in my opinion. It starts making form become very flat. This, the line work gives it better dimension. And in some cases that's, unless it's very loose and smudgy all over and it's, it's not tight and, you know, beautifully rendered, that's fine for that technique. A lot of what you'll find beginners and students do is smudging the crap out of everything, right? And making it very flat and basic. And, and if you're trying to draw it realistically, what, why go back and, and really take away from kind of the depth that you had going, right? 
with that with that line work so just a just a personal when I've got students I try to encourage them not to ever use this the stumps or the stumps I just I think it's a it's a bad it's a bad habit to get in it's like smoking at parties when you've been drinking that that can start start you know going on from there it's just a bad habit bad habit on a lighter note colorful easel loved your use of the word smudging smudging <laughs> it's a technical term smudging we're gonna make that the the jerry's we should just keep a list of amy's jerry's artorama technical terms and uses smudging being one of them all right so we're, we're how are we doing time wise we're coming up we're coming up on it guys get in your last questions and uh, comments and doodads here you said that you can't really um, sharpen or like renew the tortillions but you can um, do the stomp on like a sandpaper block mm -hmm. right? yeah, the tortillions too but it just makes them softer oh, okay right so you won't have the kind of lesser heavy weight um, I, I found that the tortillions work better for graphite making it a little more subtle um, because it doesn't lift as easy where the the uh, stomps and stumps work a little bit better on the dustier mediums but that's just I'm gonna switch back to the neutral because I'm coming across this that's just kind of how what um, what I've found as far as kind of the control of it Sandra on YouTube really enjoyed this episode. Awesome. Thank you, Sandra. She needs to join the group and get in on the homework. What? It's not graded. I love when people But care. it does make me we'll deliriously do, yeah. happy. And if you do that and you ask for help, I will give you feedback and helpful hints and all that. But you have to tag me. So many posts are made constantly. You need to tag me by name so I know that will alert me as to the posts. Yes. We also said last week, the girls and I decided that if you tag the episode number, so when you're in there and you do hashtag Dale 136, yes. then it'll be a way that you can click on that and you can see all the images from this episode. So it'll kind of gather in a group with that hashtag so then we can kind of see everything. That's so. a very good point. So the way the group is set up, there's no way for us to take all your images and catalog them in a, um, in a, an album, if you will. So if you put the hashtag for what show it was, just the JL, whatever the number is, that'll make it easier for, for people to pull up and find. I think that's a very, very good idea. Cause that, that also be a way to, if, if you're not active for a while on social media and you want to come back and see what everybody posted, mm -hmm. You can pull that up later. And not everybody watches these at all the same time. So it might be weeks until somebody mm -hmm. gets to it and posts and then, you know, you just didn't, didn't catch it. Well, and then if you search the JL136 in the group too, if you're looking for, like you said, there's so many posts and things like that. So if you're looking for the reference photos, you're going back tomorrow and looking for the reference photos, it should pull it right up. Yes. I will try to remember to do that. Well, it's, yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Again, I will get these images of the onion and the elephant put into the Facebook Live group by noon Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. And um, hope you guys had fun and learned a little something. So we will see you next week. Take care. <laughs>